up everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Roshni I'm a life coach and this channel is called Beatty grew up it's dedicated to taking control of your mental health so today I actually have a special guest my boyfriend Moses um, so we filmed the first part of the past lives video this past weekend so I will link it below um, check that out but for the rest of this video we're gonna go really specific and into much more detail with past life regressions and what it was like um, as you know from the last video I actually did a past life regression on him and I'm not a hypnotist or anything so it's not something that I offer right now um, but it's just something that we were experimenting with and tried and we ended up being able to revisit his past life so it was super super exciting and I wanted to interview him and just have you uh, be a part of this in a more detailed way but because it would have been really long we wanted to do it in more of a podcast form feel free to just play this in the background with whatever you're doing but other than that grab your coffee and your tea and get ready for a super interesting interview let's get to it Hello and welcome everyone. So um, we're just gonna jump right into it and then if you have any questions or anything that we left unanswered, just let me know in the comments below and we can definitely try and uh, get you the answers that you're looking for. All right, so the first question I have is, what were your thoughts on the afterlife before doing this regression? Well, I've always been a firm believer in reincarnation. Um, growing up, my mom was very Christian but my dad was very atheist so it kind of pushed me to just choose my own path and that's the one that identifies most with how I feel. Why did you come to that conclusion? It just makes sense like from life life is born so how can life just not be around? Yeah do you think that there's something different about life versus just a human body? No. Um, I think everything has life. I mean, plants have life. They're just in a different vessel that doesn't allow them to do the same things that our vessel allows us. Mm -hmm. So do you think like animals reincarnate or do you think that's like a human? No, I, I think everything does. I, I think you could be reincarnated as something besides a person as well. Mm -hmm. That's what I've always wondered too, because I feel like with all the research I've done for past lives, people just talk about humans becoming other humans, but obviously like you can't interview a dog or a fish and really get <laughs> their like thoughts. So it's like how, I mean, I don't even know if there's a way that we could test if we can do this amongst other species, I guess. So maybe that's why the past life like conversation has just been about humans but I do wonder like what the overlap is because if humans can become animals like I think that opens up the dis this discussion into something totally different right and I also kind of feel like the reason that nobody can remember a past life being some other vessel is because you wouldn't be able to comprehend it your senses would be different visuals would be totally different a dog's eyesight is completely different from our eyesight yeah. even if we know that it's a color difference, we also don't know how well the definition is. And the perspective and the depth of everything. Right, and because they use their other senses more, it's probably something that they rely on less than Yeah, that's true. And you can't, like, remember, I guess, like, what your paws felt like or what your fur would feel like. I mean, right. you, you might be able to, but that would be harder to... To comprehend, yeah. at least, so I don't see why your conscious would view that as valuable to show you. That's interesting. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So what was your mindset going into like this regression specifically? You know, I wasn't really too much of a believer that you could get into that. Um, like I've, I've had out-of-body experiences before, but this was more like an out-of-body journey. Mm -hmm. Like it started as an experience and then it went beyond that. And, I don't know, kind of opened my mind to thinking what other possibilities your brain can actually take you to. Interesting. So, have you, were any of those out-of-body experiences like when you were meditating or something? Yeah, definitely. Um, meditation, um, other activities, but definitely meditation. Interesting. So, what, what was like the first sensation when you went into the regression? Like... Did you feel like a tingling in like your arms and legs or did you stop feeling your body and did you feel like you were lifted out of it? 
It kind of felt like the energy was coming from the ground underneath me up. So it like started in my back and then moved forward through my body. It didn't really ever feel like I was being lifted anywhere, but you could definitely feel like you were moving places. Like it's hard to explain. Like how in movies and shows it's like a warp inward, but it wasn't really that. It was like everything moved at once. Yeah. That's interesting too, because that was kind of the language that she used, like in the hypnosis. And since I read it word for word, like I wasn't really thinking that much about what it meant, but everything was talking about like moving backwards or moving to different lights or being able to kind of choose like where in the dimensions you were going. Right. Even though, like, your spirit mind did kind of take you to a certain place that it thought you needed to go, there was, it kind of seemed like there were choices up until that point. Right, right. Well, and it wasn't so much that I was making choices, it was more that you were making the choices by reading that, and I was oh, just kind right. of following down the rabbit hole. Yeah, so did you see, like, other, like, I know we talked about, like, a purple light and, like, a kind of, like, a warm light before that that was more like white right? right or was it golden and it was kind of a mix of the two it was like mostly white but then the edges were kind of gold and then okay. the deeper you got into it the more purple it turned oh so it was all like connected that's how it seemed but when you're we're reading through it i wasn't seeing what different options i had i, I kind of feel like the options are just based on the guidance that you're getting whether it's from yourself or an outside source interesting I don't know. If anyone's thinking about doing a past life regression, it's probably good that they definitely trust the person. Because if they don't know who it is or it's not like a credible source, then they could probably lead you down like a questionable journey. Definitely. I, I mean, I, I don't think you could get comfortable enough to do the actual regression if you weren't comfortable with the person. So I, I also kind of think that you know, the different possibilities are kind of limitless because some of my friends have been telling me about the purple light and they've never done a past life regression. They've just found it on their own. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like you could go other places if you search for it or if somebody just points you right to it. So do you think it's almost like a map and like the more that you undergo that kind of thing or find a light in a meditation, the more you can find your way back to it, like under different circumstances? Definitely, because as your questions got more specific, it put me in more of a specific place. It was like going from a big picture to a portrait to a zoom in look of a feature of that portrait. like. You get the whole picture at once, but then as you ask these questions, the details get greater. That's so interesting. And it definitely sounds like that's just like the textbook definition of like astral projection or something. Would you classify this as, as some sort of projection? Because it's weird, like you were having an out-of-body experience and you were pretty much in a different dimension, but I feel like when you're, when you're under hypnosis, is it the same? I don't think so, because I've, I've had out-of-body experiences that are more astral projection-like. This, this was more like having a foot in the doorway and stretching as far as you can go. So as much as the door can close, there was a point where, well, I can't go any further. Yeah. That's really interesting. So did you feel like there was a point where you were a different person when you were going through this journey, or did it feel like it was just your mind that you're used to thinking from? In parts of it, I kind of felt like different people, but in other parts, I felt like it was me and the other person in the same room, but I could feel everything that they were showing me. Right. That's kind of what, like, my spirit guide conversation thing felt like. Like, it was like everything was being displayed, and I knew it wasn't coming from me, but all I could do was see what they were showing and not see them. Was it like that? Or did you feel like you were connected to the other person? Because that it person was It felt like I you. was connected to the other person yeah. more. Like it, it kind of felt like we were one and the same, but we were separate at the same time. Like almost how two faces in Batman, where 
yeah, he's a really good guy, but then he has kind of like this evil within him. It's the same person, but it's a constant struggle between the two. And that's almost what it felt like, except instead of struggling, it was the other side was showing and sharing more. Right. So did it ever feel like bad or questionable, or was it all just like good vibes the whole time? I mean, the, there were parts that were painful, if you remember. There were a lot of parts where I was cringing, and I'm like, I couldn't quit crying. Mm -hmm. Those parts obviously weren't great. Yeah. But at the same time, they felt good. Right, because but, it was almost like that story was being... Right, but it, it was definitely questionable. Like, at those moments, I felt like, why am I doing this, and why do I feel this way? Right. That's really interesting. But it so it felt like, like these, like, negative stories were being released that were, like, trapped before, but it didn't feel like something was, like, out to get you or, like, a scary dream or a nightmare? Or is that how it felt? No, no, it, it felt more like revealing reasons I feel pain. Because, like, both right. before I was having a lot of back pain, a lot of knee pain, this helped a lot with both. Yeah. Um, I mean, even, you know, as we were walking through Manitou filming B-roll yesterday, yeah. just, I'd not once complained. Mm -hmm. And even today, my knee doesn't hurt. Like, I, it's been, I don't know, three or four months since my knee has hurt even a little. That's so crazy. What stood out to you the most, or what was, like, the first striking thing that really made you, like, I don't know, think about the entire experience differently? Kind of when, almost when it first started. Like, once I actually started to go back, that's when I kind of believed it. Like, initially, the light. Mm -hmm. I think that was really what made me be like, wow, this is different. Mm -hmm. This isn't the same as before. What do you mean it's not the same as before? Because all my other out-of-body experiences, it's like I didn't leave the room. Mm -hmm. Like, I left my body, but I didn't leave the plane. I just hung out. It was intense on its own. As for this, this took me somewhere else. Interesting. I wish I could, like, I wish we could, like, combine both of our experiences into one person. Because I feel like I definitely left the dimension, but I'm sure, I mean, I know it was obviously still different than how you did. So I want to know, like, if, like, what if we traveled down the same path to get somewhere, but then we took different turns and I kind of stayed somewhere and you went back, like, into your own past? You know, I kind of feel like that could happen. But, I mean, we can't really know unless one of us has the other experience. I guess. Right. <laughs> um, so, what, I mean, what do you think about, like, cell memory? Because you were talking about how, like, the pain in your knees has, like, left and, like, in your back as well. So, that obviously must hold some sort of cell memory from the pain. So, first of all, can you talk about where the pain came from in your past life? Yeah, I was a soldier in a war, and I actually got injured on my knee and in my back. And I have a lot of scars on my back that won't go away. Like, no matter what we do, they just, they stay there. And even my knees are that way, too. They're really scarred up. And I actually never really fell on my knees that much as a kid, so it's really weird. Or even on my back. Um, but in in the story, like, it, it, it was like my knee and my back were both stabbed and I don't know as soon as I saw that it was like everything got released like immediately the pain from those two things were gone that's so crazy I mean if cell memory is real and if other people might have like similar stored physical pain from like a previous life like do you do you think that just doing one regression could help release a lot of that or do you think that there was more work that you had to do since that since then like did you think about it or did you keep telling yourself like oh it's not real pain or like the pain came from something else like or was it just kind of once you it was just kind of gone right after it yeah it was almost like the therapy that they do for uh, explosion victims where like if, if you were your arm was amputated in like a closed fist position your body will be stressing that muscle that way forever even when it's not there so your arms get tense and terrible and what they do is they have you put 
one limb into this mirror box and the other one on the other side and you make a closed fist and you look at both and it looks like you have both your arms mm -hmm. and they make you close your fist as tight as you can and they make you release it and when you release it it's supposed to release both hands um, and it releases all of the tension it, it almost felt like that like yeah so I felt it like it hurt for a quick second and then it just was released that's fascinating and I feel like in a weird way that is kind of what happened on like a different level when I went to the palm reader or whatever because she was like telling me that that like my neck had been cut off or or some some form of like a public injury or whatever but it took me a couple of weeks to process it and it wasn't as real for me like I couldn't have fully known if she was just bullshitting me or if it was real because I didn't go back and see it myself but because like I was telling you about all the flashbacks I was getting for like a couple of weeks straight and it was like little pieces and little glimpses of, of the puzzle being put together and it kind of like even like little things uh, where I just like stare at stones or get obsessed with like cobblestone roads like in whatever old cities I'm in like I feel like I could see myself in the flashback just staring down at a cobblestone road kind of and when those little clicks started happening for me that's when the pain was released too so I feel like yeah you do have to just like like you're like it has to completely click like in your mind and right. like yeah but I think interestingly enough if you can find someone else that can accurately tell you what your past lives are maybe there is a way to also like release some of that cell memory pain it probably isn't as effective but. how exactly did you feel it in your body did it feel like any normal sensation like I know the first description you said was that you felt hungry and like your stomach just felt empty and obviously like you'd eaten earlier that day so it wasn't real it was from like how you were feeling in that past life so obviously there's only so many ways that humans can feel hunger but like did it did it feel like you were feeling someone else's pain no it felt like my own everything that i was experiencing felt like my own body um even going through the planes it felt like nothing it felt like all my senses had been turned off for a second and then once I got into the other person's body, it just felt like my own body. Like, I, I didn't feel the mat on the ground anymore. It felt like I was standing. It felt like I was walking around. I could feel yeah. the pressing on my feet. I could feel the rumbling in my stomach. I just felt like me. Yeah. That is so cool. How? What could you tell about that person that was different than what you are? Like, how did you make that difference possible in your mind or did did you just like not think of it because you said it felt like there were kind of like two people in a room right but did it still feel like it was so much a part of yourself that it was just another piece of you it was like i was him but i knew he was also a different presence there right it's hard to explain like the room and the body were different the room was something that almost felt like it was just in my head. It was just a room with four walls, one table, two chairs. As where the body, it felt like we were one in the same. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. So what else stood out to you the most during the entire experience? What do you mean by that? Um, so, I mean, we definitely talked about, like, how the pain in your body had, um, like, I don't know, healed itself or solved itself, and obviously mm -hmm. since that happened kind of instantaneously, like, that would be something huge, but was there anything about, like, being there that stood out to you, or, I mean, what, were you just kind of, like, in a weird way, like, in shock processing everything that was around you? Yeah, because, uh, again, I didn't expect it to work. Yeah, I, I didn't either. <laughs> kind of doing it because you told me to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so, like, it just everything... Was, everything was different. So describe more of it. Like, what else did you see? And, like... I mean, you could literally see the buildings and the ground and the dirt flying in the air when the wind would come by. You could see the ripples in the water from the wind. So like it wasn't it, even, like, looking at a still shot or looking no, at an it, old picture. No, it was, like, like being you, in a different place. That's so fascinating. I wonder, like, if... 
like since time isn't linear <laughs> if there was like a blip like if there are people in like 1100 Italy like you know how there's like pictures of people that were like two centuries later and they're like in modern day clothes but it was like a picture taken forever ago yeah what if like someone saw you you know what I mean that's interesting I don't think that could happen really I my theory on those pictures is you go into an astral projection and then you end up in this other time period. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a window to get back though. And if you don't make that window, you're trapped wherever you are. Oh my God. And maybe the other people can't see you, but you can definitely still be picked up by film and camera. Whoa. So it it's like a ghost and person the that's difference stuck. in light. So your eyes can't always see that difference in light if it's a translucent material to the eye, but to the camera, it may not be translucent, so it can just still see it. That's terrifying to be like caught in it. <laughs> like another time and place. That's weird. Okay, well, was there like any sort of favorite part that you have? Like, is there like a peaceful scene that you ever think about? Or like, I know you said your favorite thing to do in that past life was like fish by the river and just kind of enjoy like that stillness. So like, did, do you ever think about that? Or like, do you ever find yourself like... I definitely think about waking up on that gondola. It's oh, yeah. the most peaceful part of the whole trip. <laughs> Why? It was just the one moment that I didn't feel like I cared about anything. Yeah. I didn't remember that I was hungry in that instance. I didn't remember that I was poor. All I remembered was that I was waking up and it was going to be a good day. That's so crazy. I wonder, like, I feel like there's more and more people in this day and age that are just so freaked out about their identity and not knowing who they are. But I feel like after doing this much research and, like, looking into past lives that much, I feel like people feel like they don't know who they are because they've forgotten so many older versions of themselves. Like, do you feel like this helped you understand who you are in this life more? No, I don't think so. I, I think who you are in this life is based off of the experiences in this life. Yeah. I think you can have, you know, mental barriers and physical barriers based on your past lives, but I, I don't think it defines you as a person. Yeah, no, I don't think it defines you, but I think that that would be, like, an interesting contributing factor because it feels like... I mean, did you feel like you felt more like yourself when you went to your past life and you saw things that you enjoyed that you still enjoy? Yes and no. I, I feel like it made me understand why I like some of the things that I like, because nobody else in my family <laughs> likes a lot of the things I like. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't feel like I felt any more or less than who I already felt like. Okay, that makes sense. Well, did it change your perspective on, like, how you thought about reincarnation or on what you think about the afterlife? No. I, I think my views were already kind of lined up that way. Yeah. Just I didn't think it was something that you could see during this existence. Right. Yeah. Like, that there was, like, an existing portal that we could go to pretty much any time. Right. That is interesting. Um, so what advice would you give to someone else who wants to do their first regression or who wants to visit their past life? Don't be scared. Really? It's one of those things that it's not scary at all. Even the scary parts aren't scary. Even if you were to do something and see something traumatic, it's not you. And mm -hmm. it doesn't affect your choices as a person. It really doesn't. Because it's not this existence and this existence is what matters. Um, I have a sticky note on my desk that says the past has nothing to do with the future. Mm. And I, I firmly believe that. Um, just because something happened yesterday doesn't mean that it has to happen again. Choice is up to you. Do you feel like that, like going back to your past life made you feel that way more? Like, like that you don't have to hold on to any of that even if you weren't like you weren't born in this life being like oh i used to be a soldier and i'm in all this physical pain but like do you think that seeing that helped you just let it all go and feel more like you're committed to this life well i i just feel like the lack of pain has helped me do the things i used to do so yeah. I, I don't think it's driven me 
to do more. It just driven has driven me to do what I was doing before. That makes sense. I feel like it's still, I don't know, I think I'm getting more and more comfortable with the idea of it, but it still is really scary, I think, to experience a past life. I don't know. I guess it does help, though, like, to hear that advice and that it's not really scary and that it doesn't feel like you. I just feel like, I mean, did you feel like you were empathizing with that person? Well, it felt like it was you, so you didn't probably feel like you had to empathize because you were feeling everything that he was feeling. Well, kind of, sort of. I was only feeling what he was feeling in the moments he was showing me. So, I mean, you got me to a certain point, but there was still a gatekeeper. Yeah. And he was only letting me see certain things he wanted to let me see. So in a way, I did have to sympathize and really feel for this person and even empathize with who they were. It Because they were the ones who were showing me what mm -hmm. was going on. So I was only seeing what they wanted me to see. So in the regression... It basically said to take you where your spirit mind, like the point of entry that your spirit mind wants. And that basically means like where like an instance of pain happened that became a trauma so that you can like go back to it and like resolve it basically. So do you think that they were only showing you painful things or do you think that they were still protecting you from some things that may have been worse? I don't think so. I, I think they were more trying to have me understand them, because I feel like they felt misunderstood through their whole life. Mm -hmm. So to really see things from their perspective, I feel like brought closure to them. I feel like it's almost like a service that like a medium could do. You know what I mean? Like, you know how yeah. like mediums like normally try and like there can only really be connected with people that have something to say. So it's kind of like you're relieving that person that can't say something to people in this life. And it's almost like it's not even as much for you or for who's hearing the message as it is taking that load off of, like, someone who's passed away. And I feel like that's I think almost... it would be harder for a medium to convince someone about past lives, though. No, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like a medium doing what a medium does and taking that burden off is something that is similar but still different than, like, a person going back to their own past lives. Because it's, yeah. like, just releasing all the untold stories that no one's heard that are like hiding and waiting to be told, but they're stories that only you can access. Right. Yeah. But I also feel like if a medium tried to offer that service, it would be really hard to convince that person because of how hard it was to convince them the first time that you were really a medium. And then they would still be skeptical. I, I almost feel like they would be more skeptical because you are already so in tune with this one side. Mm-hmm. I could see that. I also feel like it doesn't make sense to me how a palm reader could know about your past lives. No, I, I don't see how they could know specifics, but they could definitely see kind of a general picture. Yeah, I mean, the main thing she was saying was that most, I lived a lot of different lives, but in most of them I died before I was like 24 or 28. See, and that's a pretty broad picture. That'd be like me describing the Mona Lisa as a portrait of a woman. Yeah, I guess that's true. But it's, I mean, she did also say this specific thing about, like, the king and, like, being a healer and, like, the king's baby and all of that. Like, do you think that... I, don't, I didn't overly resonate with the reason. I just knew that there was some sort of, like, trauma from a punishment that was really instilled in me. And that pillory image, like, I cannot... It explains, like, the hunching in my back and the constant pain right there. And, like, a lot of it did go away, but, like... I feel like now it's more centralized to just my spine, so I probably still need to like release more information from whatever happened. But I've been too scared because I don't want to go back to something that's that traumatic and like relive it or over empathize with the person that's going through it and then feel traumatized. I guess that's all stuff that's in your control during it. I mean, you could definitely lose yourself in that moment. I kind of feel like I almost did for a second where it almost felt like that person was going to be me. And I feel like that's what you see in a lot of, like, the regression videos of people, like, where people are really freaking out, where, like, these people start speaking in different languages and stuff, is mm -hmm. they quit thinking for a second, and they let that other person take over. Ooh, so interesting. So it's one of those things that, yeah, they're a gatekeeper, but 
they can also step through if they want to. Mm -hmm. What's to stop them besides you? So, do you think that they could step forward and then get, like, stuck that way, and then your personality could go back? Or do you think that once you end the regression and the hypnosis is over, that you pretty much just come back? Well, like I said, it's like having a foot in the door, not being able to leave. So, I feel like it's that way for both sides. It's a connection mm. that you're really, like, on a bungee cord. And if, you know, you step too far, you might sling back. And... Let's say you do step into the other side and you step past that person, that person can still turn around and pull you out. That yeah. person's still technically in front of you. I mean, I guess it makes sense because even if they did come through and somehow they stayed with you through like getting out of the hypnosis, they still wouldn't know how to survive in this day and age and they wouldn't really be themselves because they wouldn't like be around anything that they know or have the people in their life that they know or right and they wouldn't have full function ability because again i couldn't control what movements i was doing but i could feel every movement mm -hmm. and i feel like it's the same way like if they came over here and they could control a limited function they wouldn't be able to do much other than that mm -hmm. interesting what else like stood out to you in terms of like okay so you said that you had a horse but that you thought that that horse spirit was like our current dog right now do you still think that or like do you yeah it's hard to remember i definitely feel like they were very similar if not the same so d did you recognize any other people that might be in your life now no it was mostly strangers and they weren't showing me a lot of interactions with other people. It was a very lonely existence. Mm -hmm. It seemed like they really didn't have any friends until they were on that farm. Oh, right. But then that farm was where they left into battle, right? Right. From there, that's where I went. So I don't know what happened in between that and in between being homeless and being on the farm. I saw those three different places, three mm -hmm. different times. Mm-hmm. But, and so you pretty much lived major parts of your life. Right, just the things that they felt were important. Yeah. Interesting. So do you think that most people's souls kind of travel in, like, a pack? Like, lots of people say that, like, they're... I don't know, that, like, even people that they didn't like or people that weren't necessarily good to them in previous lives have come back to be, like, their mom or their sister or someone in their life that they might not get along with, but it's obviously for different reasons. Or sometimes, like, there'll be, like, people who were husband and wife in one life, but then they'll come back, it's like, and, like, one will be the other's son or daughter. Like, it, there's really, like, weird examples like that, but I feel like it's in a lot of circumstances. Do you feel like... Even if you didn't see it in your own life, do you think that that would make sense with what you saw? Definitely, because I feel like we're all one collected consciousness. Mm -hmm. And obviously this consciousness is trying to better itself at all moments. Right. So it has these conflicting parts that it wants to mesh together. Well, if they tried once and it didn't work, why not keep trying until it finally gets the result at once? Yeah. So... Does that mean that there is, like, a result that should be happening, or do you think that it just keeps trying, and as its needs increase, and as its desires change, and all of those things happen, like, it just kind of fulfills... Diff like, do you think it's more of, like, a probability thing, as in, like, it's exhausting all of its options, like a machine would or something, or do you think that there's some sort of, like, perfect ideal that we're just, like, getting closer and closer to, it in terms of, like, the soul group? I think it's... A probability thing and I think it's because it's multiplying itself so much right because I feel like we keep ending up in the same situations even in society and it just keeps throwing more paint at the canvas hoping that it'll look prettier at some point mm -hmm. I sadly feel like it probably needs to restart but until then we're just gonna keep getting paint thrown on the earth over and over until it's just not there anymore well, do you think that there's, like, a finite amount of consciousness, consciousnesses? Definitely. I, I feel like, I feel like if it overloads itself, 
it'll have to stop at least trying this experiment. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we're a part of the brain where it's trying to fix itself, but when things become obsolete, we discard them. And I feel like we get that from this big consciousness. Because that's even how every piece of life works. Trees, when they no longer need their leaves because they're not going to get enough sun to live, they drop them. Um, animals, when they're done eating the meat, they leave it, they can't carry it with them. Mm -hmm. Us, when we our phone gets too old, we drop it, get a new one. Mm -hmm. It's just the way that all living things work. So if there's groups of people, right, like a large family, um, and everyone in that family basically has like reincarnations of those same that same soul pack, whether it's through friends or whatever other relationships in all those different lives. So do you think that like a group of like five souls or seven souls with their respective dynamics, if they can happen to all live on earth at the same time and find each other, do you think that like that's what the ideal is is finding like a group dynamic where like the group in itself is self-sufficient or do you think it's all of humanity i think it's all of humanity and not even just humanity just all of life being cohesive because at this point we've gotten to the point where nature is cohesive and that's when man came around because mm -hmm. before that it was well there was too much of this too much of that well now mm -hmm. there's too much of us um that the consciousness wants us to be one and that's why it keeps trying to bump out those little bumps. And mm -hmm. it just keeps trying and keeps trying and keeps trying. Because it wants us to all be one. But these little bumps, we, we can't all connect together. Mm -hmm. So it thinks maybe if we throw more people at it, that there will be more chances that we can all start to connect. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the... The packs of souls that are traveling together, whether they're trying to or not, they are almost like a deterrence in the whole group being together because it's almost like little clicks in like right. a bigger well, group and, of people. And when you hear about people who know other people from their past lives, it's never like a good thing. And I feel like that's because if you can sync with people, you're less likely to see them later because we know that that works. So why are we still trying to make that experiment happen. We know it works. So well, let's try like something else. A lot of people that will have like like I said, like a husband, wife or like a son, daughter and they like loved each other, so they just keep finding I mean I guess that's what they call like but a But it twin always flame. ends in kinda like a tragic way and so it feels like it's an unresolved experiment. Let's try it again. Oh that's an interesting way to look at it. I mean it's hard to know if that's how it always is, but even then like I feel like in any system of probability there is still a chance that two people who resolve their relationship perfectly would still come back together right unless it's not so based on probability but based on situation so we know that this works let's see if this works because mm -hmm. if you notice peace doesn't last anywhere for very long mm -hmm. communities social circles countries doesn't matter it right. lasts for a bleak moment in time the big picture things and there's always something else to fight about right because we know that this works all right let's try something else and it's like it says in the bible you know everything will be over once there is peace mm -hmm. well that makes sense because now we don't need to try anymore we've fixed all the problems mm. so do you think that like there is like a spiritual theme or some sort of like like a central theme, like something as broad as like justice or as broad as like, I don't know, uh, I'm trying to think of like a nicer word than justice or like retribution. Like I think unity. Unity. Yeah. Like, so do you think that individual lives can have themes like that? Yeah. I mean, I, I think we all kind of have this overview of what our life is. And if you could sum it up in one word, we all could. But the issue with us becoming unified is that we want to be unified over the dumbest things. So the goal is to be unified, but because of our experiences, because of this, because of that, we're only unified in a small section at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's definitely just people not being able to like agree on what humanity means, which is stupid, because mm -hmm. it's like... You could just say that we're all human, but then everyone has a different definition of what that looks like or what that should entail or whatever, and 
I, I don't know. I feel like it's just the disagreements that keep happening. But so like we were talking about either probabilities or recycling souls through different lives for a while. So do you feel like like if if peace really is the goal, is the goal at the end of the day just love and understanding each other? Or do you think that there's other reasons why we're here and that we're driven by individualistic reasons and blah, blah, blah. Or do you think that it's really like this collective trying to find itself type of I think thing? it's about us finding unconditional love for each other. Yeah. So it, it's not so much about understanding or it, it's about knowing that this is another living thing and you should treat it as another living thing. Mm -hmm. Period. I think that that's interesting too, especially when it comes to like the idea of love and understanding, like we focus so much on understanding or on understanding in order to bring humanity into other things. But I feel like a big part of love is loving without understanding. Right. Because how easy is it to love something you understand and that you know, but how hard is it to love someone who's robbing you? Right. It's almost impossible because you just... You don't understand. Yeah. But or even if you do person. understand, like, you can say, like, oh, they're robbing me because I need, because they need money. Like, that's still, there's, like, a survival of the fittest idea that comes into play where it's you versus them and it's not about the collective anymore. So until we can resolve that, it's just going to keep happening, you think? Definitely. What if humanity dies before we resolve these spiritual, like, disconnects? And it'll try again in a different way. We won't know about it, but... So you think, like, whatever manifestation it is, the universe is just trying to understand itself and love itself as best as possible, and even if the universe can't recreate humans the way that we are now in our bodies on this planet Earth, then they would still create another vessel, like, a different alien form or a different species to begin to understand itself so that the universe could... Definitely, because as a conscious, as a collective whole, we don't think the same anymore. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like it's trying to, like, who doesn't want to have one thought and have one mindset? Mm -hmm. And what better way to sort it out than to separate it and line the two sides up and decide which side is better? But in this case, there's so many different thoughts and so many different circumstances, you have to let them all play out and figure out what's best and try to let it become the best situation. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Do you have any other final thoughts? I think everyone should try past life regression. Really? At least once, even if it doesn't work. Yeah. It's worth a try. I mean, we should all try to do different things every day. Why not make that one of them? I feel like it's so endlessly fascinating, and I keep going back between wanting to, like, literally do one constantly and do a million throughout my life and, like, never wanting to do it. Like, obviously, I'm not going to, like, actually do one every day, but I'm like, wouldn't it be so cool if I could visit, you know, like, my however many lives? Or, like, is it even possible to visit all of them? Like, if one of your lives was fine and it was resolved, then is there even a reason, like, will your spirit mind even let you go back to it? Like, it's all those little things, but I feel like in some ways you could get, like, hooked on it and just keep wanting to see what else happened. Like, not in, like, a crazy addicted sort of way, but just, it's just fascinating and it is you, so why not learn more about yourself, I guess? I mean, it's like getting a tattoo. It's like you get a one painful. No, and kidding. you want more. Yeah. I mean, you obviously don't want to do it all at once. Nobody gets their first tattoo, and then it's like, all right, go for the Full school. body, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's definitely something everyone should try. And it's still different every time, just like a tattoo would be. Like, it wouldn't feel exactly the same. It wouldn't be in the same place, and you wouldn't right. be the same person as you were last time doing that. Well, even in the one regression, what did I experience? Like, two, maybe three lives total? What do you mean? I thought you were still the same guy, but you no, just... No, but there was that stillborn. Oh, right. That was intense. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Maybe another time. <laughs> and so was it just those two, or were you an adult in any other life? I can't remember. Those are the only two I remember. 
We should have recorded it. <laughs> you didn't want to, though. I didn't think it was going to work. Oh. Well, we'll record it next time. I'm sure we could be able to maybe go back to the same life. Yeah, I unless you were, unless that. your mind doesn't need to take you there. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think I need to. In fact, <laughs> Would I you be upset the book. if you went back to that life? I don't know. Not if there was other cool shit to show me. <laughs> okay, guess that makes sense. Um, yeah. So, was there anything else you wanted to say before we close? No. Cool. So, my last question: How would you define self worth? I think self-worth is defined by how you value yourself as a person. Nice. So what is one thing that could bring people closer to your definition of self-worth? Doing the things that not only make you happy, but make other people happier around. Interesting. Because then you'll just want to keep doing it? Well, then it'll spread. And I feel like most people just want to be accepted. Mm -hmm. Easiest way to be accepted is just be yourself. Yeah. And be kind to others. And to let other people be themselves. I mean, I, I feel like that's part of being kind to others. Yeah. It's hard to... But I mean, like... Oppress someone and feel <laughs> kind about it. I don't know. Some would say there's been people who've done that. Oh, I'm sure there are people who did that. <laughs> well, he wasn't kind to others. He was kind to a group of people. Well, they're other than him. I'm talking about all others. I'm kind <laughs> to all others. <laughs> all right. Well, it's a step towards loving without understanding. Oh, definitely. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>